All right, guys, welcome to day 57 of Onshape. What we're going to be doing specifically today is we're going to be making a first class lever with gravity and the bounds of our machine in consideration. Um, I know there are a lot of other great resources out there about making machines, so I'm not going to make all of them, but I do want to show how to use the parallel mate and how to edit some of your mates. That way your machine obeys the laws of physics a little more closely. So what you're welcome to do is you're welcome to skip on ahead in this video once the parts are already made, but um, to stay true, I'm going to go ahead and create these parts as well. So you can follow along with me here, or you can just zoom on up and see those pieces in action. Okay, now first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a beam. So let's go ahead and make a beam. Let's give it a thickness of, you know, if I had the right, board, right keys on my keyboard, let's give it a thickness of a quarter inch and a length of six inches. And now let's make our fulcrum. So I'm going to go make, draw a line all the way through, down and bottom. And then just to make sure our fulcrum is nice and equal, let's go into that equals constraint. And there we go. Okay. And let's go and give it a 1.5 inches. There we go, everything's fully constrained. You see solid black lines. Now let's make our arrow. So first thing I'm gonna do is draw an arrow the best I can. Let's go ahead and make sure we're not being too haphazard with our drawing of our arrow. That way when I go in and try to do some constraints to make it look nice, it doesn't make a wonky shape on me. Okay, I like that arrow, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight it, and control C, copy and paste it. This way I can just reuse the same part of that sketch, when I extrude. So let's go ahead and extrude all these pieces, a depth of one inch. And now let's name them, because naming is kind of important. So we've got our fulcrum. We have our beam. And we'll see why, once I start doing my mates, why this is kind of important. We'll call this our effort. And we'll call this last one our resistance. Okay, so let's go over and click the plus sign. Let's go over to create an assembly. Let's now throw all these pieces in here. Okay, when I create assembly, you always want to find something to fix. Something's not going to move, and that's going to be our fulcrum here. And here's why naming is really helpful, because when I click on fulcrum over here, it tells me what part it is. You can try to hunt down the part, but if you know what the naming is over here, you can just right click over there, hit fix, and when you start doing your pieces, the naming convention really helps you out here. So we're going to do a revolute mate. We're going to do the center of this face of the beam on the center of our fulcrum right here. We're going to click play. It is going the correct direction. Our extremes aren't figured out yet. And so what we can do is we can know that our limits are gonna be negative 60 to 60, and that's because since we made an equilateral triangle, when I click play, let's try that again. I didn't click out first. There we go, we go from that negative 60 to 60. Next thing is gonna be, is gonna be the edge of our effort is gonna go on to the edge of the beam. If you wanna make sure it's working, click play. And then get the green check mark, and we'll do the same thing for resistance. Click play. Okay. Now, here's where some things start to go a little bit wonky is that some students might, you know, hey, gravity's already in effect here. However, when I animate my model, it does not take gravity in consideration of those effort and resistance. Or, 
if I were to animate, you know, something else. You know, it's now 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 those aren't in relation with one another. So what we have to do then is we have to put in some other constraints that'll help us out as well. And that will be a new con new mate we've never done before called parallel. And what parallel does is it takes two planes and makes sure that they are always parallel to each other. Not necessarily their distances, but that they're parallel to each other. So we're going to take the top of our force and the bottom of our fulcrum. The preview mode will say, hey, 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 we want to put this thing down here. Remember, preview is only interacting with those two parts. It doesn't take any of your other mates into consideration. And we're going to do the same thing for our resistance down here. Okay. Now, when I animate, we click play. Now our force and resistance are now sticking along with gravity. So if we're doing a first class lever with a hanging mass or hanging weight, you know, you have that weight always has to be parallel to gravity or parallel to the surface of the earth. And so, um, or say perpendicular to gravity, depending on how you look at it in your frame of reference. But my fulcrum or my beam actually goes past my fulcrum. So if this is sitting on a table, we're actually going through the tables. How do we, how do we make sure we don't go through the bottom of our fulcrum here? And so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to eyeball. And until we get the distance, the parallel distance between this line and the bottom of here to be as close to zero as we can get. Okay, when we do that, we can now go right click in here and edit our revolute mate. And we notice that we are 25 degrees tilt in our um, revolute mate. So instead of our negative 60 to 60, we're going to do negative 25 to 25. And what this will do for us is that will make sure our beam can't go through the floor, regardless of how big our fulcrum is or isn't. And um, that's how we put gravity into consideration. Now, I'm not, I'm curious. I'm just curious what this is going to do if I just animate a parallel constraint. Yeah, it doesn't compute any steps of the system. What happens if I were to animate our revolute mate on our force? What does that do for me? I guess it has a little bit of a heart attack. So we're going to have to make sure that when we animate, we're going to animate from the revolute of our um, fulcrum to the beam. And this allows to go back and forth. Okay, there are a couple things when you're looking at machines and some things that how do you measure your, I would say your effectively measure your distances and whenever you click on any face, point, or body in Onshape. So if I were to click on this, this line right here, we can then look at the distance between this line of the fulcrum and this bottom edge right here and it'll tell you down in the bottom what your distance is. So you can't quite see it now. So let's see if I can uh, move my, there we go. Hey, hey, there we go. Now our minimum distance right here is three inches. And so that allows us to see uh, what we got going on here. Okay guys. This is it for machines that I'm going to do for now, uh, just to simulate gravity and how to do it. But this video has been fun to make. I'm looking forward to machines and what they can do on Onshape. If I come up with any designs or any bright ideas I haven't seen on the YouTubes, I would make lovely, um, may love to make those videos. But I'm not going to recreate the wheel if I don't have to. You guys are awesome. Stay awesome. And I will see you on the next video.